Hey everybody, as usual, please like and subscribe. Feel free to check out any of my other reviews of any other Star Wars shows, as well as my own personal Star Wars content. And let's get into this. So, last week, last week was was a real cringe fest. Right now I feel like I've been uh, inside of the stomach of a pterodactyl for 24 hours, but I'm still going to do this review. Anyway, as we start off, we're back on Navarro, and we get a shot of uh, the IG droid with his body missing, <laughs> reminding us of the super cringe horror movie scene where he <laughs> where he went after Grogu, dragging his dismembered self around on the floor, and then that really cheesy line at the end, that's using your head. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen it, it's pretty bad. And then Swamp Thing in his, with his pirate ship shows up, and... He's probably mad about his guys getting shot because a bunch of his guys showed up in Navarro and demanded that Carl Weathers let them drink beer in a school that it was a former bar and it's school now. And Carl Weathers is like, bro, you can't drink in there. There's no beverages come to my house. And they freaked out anyway. It was a really stupid plot line, but I guess he's mad that they got shot for being dumb. So now he's going to be even more dumb and go after people in Navarro. And you're like, Bro, if your pirates are that dumb, find better pirates. But anyway, so then Carl Weathers is like, get out of here. Uh, to Swamp Thing guy, when he shows up, and Swamp Thing guy laughs, and he's like, "The new, basically the New Republic is a joke and can't protect him. Excuse me, can't protect Navarro or anything. And he's laughing at, at the threat of the New Republic coming to save him. That And... And all of this is just to make the sequels make sense. This is just all to make the sequels make sense because the First Order is just massive, bigger than the New Republic, more powerful. And so they have to make the New Republic seem incompetent and dumb to try and make it so that we will be we will believe in the situation that's happening in the sequels. So Swamp Thing decides he's just going to start opening fire and he just starts blasting citizens of Navarro. And destroying the little city, and then Carl Weather's character sends a signal to the New Republic base nearby about it. So he sends a signal to a guy he knows at the New Republic base that's not super far away. And then we cut to the New Republic base, and Zeb from Rebels is there. He has absolutely no other role in this other than to be there on the screen so people can be like, Did you see him? Did you see Zeb? Zeb was in it. Oh my goodness. And Again, it's just it's just galaxy shrinking fan service. It's like you know every character sees every other character, and there's no you get no semblance of expanse or anything. And then the other guy, and it was the it was the, one of the it was one of the X X wing fighters that you know Mando had a little traffic stop with in season one. Basically, Zeb tells him that you know if you make a request for uh, to go help the Navarro people. To the New Republic, it could take weeks to get an answer, and so the he decides to go right to Coruscant to to get them to approve him taking New Republic fighters and going and helping Navarro. And then, so so again, you're like the New Republic is disorganized and stupid. Like, why would it take weeks? You can literally talk to somebody live across the galaxy or send a signal, and yet here we are. You know, oh, I, it could take weeks to get a response. <sighs> and again, it's so that we will accept their incompetence in allowing some massive for first order to exist under their nose. It's just, but, and even in that case, there was a way they could have done it that might have, might have worked. Although still have been disappointing, but might have at least made sense. But just saying, well, they're good. We're, let's just make them incompetent. Thanks, guys. And the thing that's really bothersome about this too is like, so they take, they, apparently they're, they they take weeks to respond and they're really busy dealing with trying to get a hold on all of these systems. But meanwhile, where they are, like where Zeb and Buddy are and, and this new Republic base, all the ships are just sitting there. They're all grounded. There's all these fighters. You, they show it in the show. And all of the pilots are just sitting around drinking at a bar. Like, they're all just sitting around drinking, having fun. Like, all these guys. And they're not out fighting Empire Remnants or doing anything. And and this fact will matter later and throughout the episode. Like, that doesn't make sense. The New Republic is so strapped for time and takes two weeks to get you noticed, but all of our fighters are just sitting there doing nothing. Picking their bums. 
and then I guess, you know, so he goes to Coruscant, but it's like, so I guess it must take a, a pretty short time to travel to Coruscant. You know, that's sort of keeping with the Disney Star Wars, you know, people traveling to multiple planets in a day theme that they seem to con- consistently do, which again, shrinks the galaxy. And then he, so he gets there and he wants to talk to somebody about being allowed to use the ships that are sitting there doing absolutely nothing <laughs> on the base he's on. And then we see the chick from the frame scientist, you know, the one that framed the scientist that was working on Grogu or whatever, trying to do cloning and stuff. And she's there. And then, oh my goodness, it's Tim Meadows. It's Tim Meadows from Saturday Night Live. And if this show gets if this show gets instant redemption, if he says the line, oh, it's a lady, then this, this show's automatically the best show ever, right? If he says that. And uh, he doesn't. And then, then, and then they meet, and Tim Meadows' character's like, dude, you're a long way from home. And, and you're watching that being like, so... It's like, is he? You know, like, how long did it take to get there? And if it's that far away, wouldn't the pirates already have run Navarro into the ground? Like, and and Tim Meadows hasn't heard of Navarro, and he's a colonel? So he says he hasn't, he's never even heard of the place? It just doesn't make any sense. So the base that the buddy was at is, is super far from Corzamp. So what's going on while he's away? with these pirates and the Navarro and people. And then the Meadows doesn't know Navarro even exists. And he's a Colonel <sighs> again, showing how inc- incompetent the new Republic is. And it sure makes you feel good about what the OT fought for. Doesn't it? Right. They, this is what they fought for, for total incompetence. Dumb makes no sense. New Republic. Yay. And then that chick, the, the one that framed the scientist comes in and says Navarro hasn't signed the charter, uh, you know, the charter of the New Republic to become part of it. And then it's decided that they can't be helped as member worlds have backlog requests. So basically the bad guys are running rickshaw all over the New Republic and the New Republic sucks and can't handle it. Except that where this guy came from and that military base and those fighter pilots are all just sitting around doing nothing and drinking and playing pool. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. And then Buddy petitions, <laughs> petitions, and brings up uh, Moff Gideon about how he was, you know, going after the Navarans. And then the the chick looks all interested. Um, but none of this makes sense. The base this guy comes from again has a bunch of guys sitting there doing nothing, and. The pilots are drinking and playing games in a bar, but the New Republic is too busy to do anything. Like, even if they haven't signed the charter, like, do something. Like, why wouldn't you do something to make the Devarans want to sign off and become part of the New Republic and grow the New Republic? Isn't that the whole point? So none of it makes any sense. This is so stupid. And then by the end of this scene, it's very obvious that the chick is a mole. She's still an Empire person, and she's just in the New Republic. So, And she makes angry faces and lets you know as the audience that that's the case and also another side note that i thought of the new republic started wiping the scientist's memory before even interrogating him about the details of moff gideon like if they had interrogated him about the details of moff gideon wouldn't everybody know know where navarro was like wouldn't this be an issue and so so the whole thing is ridiculous and it makes the show not believable as you know no government would be that dumb like, like, why? Like, why wouldn't they <laughs> at least find him, get him for me? Like, you're going to wipe his memory anyway. You're going to be like the Empire in electroshock therapy, the poor poor bugger anyway. So why why wouldn't you just sh- interrogate him and get the information or shock him into giving you the information about all this stuff? But it's just, it's so bad. And then we cut back to uh, the Navarro refugees that have left the city, but there's literally only like 30 of them. I thought this was like a full-blown city. Like, that's what they make it seem like. And it's like, it looks so low budget. And then Carl Weathers character is like, don't worry, people, help is coming. And everyone's like, how do you know? And he's like, I sent a signal and blah, blah, blah. And then, and then Buddy shows up where the Mandos are, like the X-Wing fighter guy. And he finds out where they are because he served with the R5 that Mando in the previous episode bought from Afro Lady. 
even though he was super insistent on getting the IG going because he's going to Mandalore and he needs the IG. But then for then Afro Lady's just like, buy this. And he's like, okay, even though they spent an entire episode about how he had to have the IG anyways. All this is doing is just reminding us of how stupid the previous episodes were. But anyways, so I guess R5's told him where they were. And again, we're shrinking the galaxy you know, with Disney, and you know, this droid was with R2-D2 in A New Hope on Tatooine, and then he's with Afro Lady, and he just happened to serve with this guy. <sighs> anyway, and then it's just, and, and Din says the Mandos will have to relocate, because people know where they are now. And, of course, this is the same pilot who cut Mando a break, because everyone knows everybody in the galaxy <laughs> apparently... 15 people, and so Mando is going to help him now by not having the other Mandos kill him uh, so that the where they live stays secret. It's, uh, that's just... So the, Mandal- so the Mandos are kind of weirdo killers, too. Like, they, like they, they're not righteous. They would have full-blown killed this guy if didn't hadn't stepped in and said, no, don't. What? This is just, and it's not his fault the stupid droid sent him the signal where they live, but they're just going to kill him anyway. Gay Mandos. I'm really rooting for those weirdos now. Like, they're, they're, they're sickos too, killing a guy for that. He didn't do anything. Uh, this show sucks. <laughs> it just sucks. And then Buddy tells Mando he thinks the Empire is growing again because of the pirates. He says it doesn't smell right that they attack Navarro. And you're like, what? Why would he make that connection? Like, that doesn't make any sense. And then it's all just stupid crap because they're desperate to get us to think the First Order makes sense in the sequels. That's all this is. Like, the pirates somehow are connected to the Empire now. Like, even though there's zero evidence. (laughs) It's so dumb. And then, just like last episode, the Mandos are sitting around talking about the situation forever. Sitting around the fire instead of doing something. Like, how stupid is this? It's got to be a few days by now. And the pirates will have killed everyone and took over by now. But I guess just like the Mando kid that survived for 24 hours in the pterodactyl stomach, it's all good, you know? Just, just Mandalorians just take their time. Like, someone's someone's in peril? Well, just, let's sit down and meditate about it for a while and see what happens. <laughs> take your time. Pass the peace pipe around for a few more days. <laughs> it's just so stupid. And then... Mando passes the conch, <laughs> or in this case, it's a hammer thing to the armor. I guess that's whoever has the conch gets to speak like it's Lord of the Flies. And then another Mando guy, the one whose son was in the dino for a day, gets the conch, and he's like, we need to do this and help these people. Yeah, so basically the X-Wing fighter pilot guy was just getting the Mandalorian to help him because the New Republic wouldn't, I guess. They're going to go, oh, and, and Mando's going to go back and take the tract of land that Carl Weathers' character offered him in the beginning, and the Mandalorians are going to live there after they save them from the pirates. That's the whole plan here. And then we cut back to the to Navarro and the pirates. Oh, and they were just so stupid. The pirates are back. It shows them coming out of the school with booze, <laughs> and they're all drunk, fulfilling their dream from episode one of, we want to drink in school. We, this is our goal in life. <laughs> and they did it. Way to go. You got your, you're drinking in the school. Like, it's just so stupid. And then Mando shows up and he distracts the main ship to follow him. Well, Bo Katan drops Mando's onto the surface to deal with the pirates on the surface. And then after the pirate fighters pursue Mando, uh, Bo starts attacking their main ship. And then the fighters are called back to take on Bo Katan. And then the Mandos push uh, push the pirates. Like on the uh, the Mandos on the ground push the pirates. There's like five of them left to the edge of the city, where the thirty or so civilians <laughs> trap them on the other side. Side it looks low budget again with these thirty people. You're like, how many, the, this few people lived in this city really? Like that's does it's just weird and. You know, the whole thing about, like, Carl Weathers' character not signing with the New Republic, it was just a plot convenience so the Mandos would accept moving there onto the track land of that he promised Mando. Because they don't like the New Republic. 
if Carl had just signed it, you know, if he, they wouldn't move there if it was a New Republic planet. So it's just plot convenience. And if Carl had just signed it years ago like a sane person, the New Republic would have helped him. And this whole thing would have been pointless. So it's just all contrivance and convenience. Because the, you don't, you're not shown, like, there's no reason why he wouldn't sign with the New Republic. He calls them for help, but he wouldn't sign the charter to be part of their system. So it was just plot convenience so that we could have the Mandalorians. Like, this is terrible writing. Everything's just convenient on this show, even though it's nonsensical, right? It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, so they take down Swamp Thing's ship, the pirate ship, which is one of the few cool things about this show. Uh, I like the design of the ship. And then, and all this, you know, while the whole pile, <laughs> all this happens while a whole bunch of New Republic ships are just sitting at that base doing nothing. Not even being used. You would think they would want to help Navarro, like I said earlier, to get them to see that they need the New Republic. No, no, we're just going to sit here. The New Republic sucks. And and then, and now the Mandos are the heroes of Navarro, and the people accept them, and they have a home. They're going to stay there. Yay. Well, it's better than Crocodile pterodactyl land where they lose half their people every day because they're living in a totally stupid area at least finally they came to their senses <laughs> where there's beasts everywhere what are you doing you morons and then out of nowhere the armor tells Bo to take her helmet off after all of this she takes, <laughs> she tells her to take her helmet off and then she tells her she can unite the clans of Mandalore because she's walked both worlds or some convoluted statement it's just like what <laughs> So the dumb helmet creed and all that crap gets thrown out the window because Bo is a capable soldier? Like, what is going on? It's, it's like, out of nowhere. Like, where? what is the what is the, the armorer's motivation for this? She just flips on a dime. Like, it's just so stupid. Uh, so Amanda went through that whole thing. Go bath, do all this stuff, and then... And the armor's just like, no, it doesn't matter. We're going to be led by somebody who doesn't follow my helmet creed. What? Uh, what is happening? Was her rule not important? And again, why did anyone give this armor any authority at all? Why? Like the other Mandalorians like that have had their helmets on for like decades. I'd be looking at her being like, are you kidding me, woman? Like I've, I swore allegiance to you and this is what you're doing now? Like, they should all just be like, nah, man, get out of here. Like, beat her up and kick her out. Like, what? This is just so stupid. And she's just f proving she's full of crap. Uh, so everything was pointless. And then Bo walks with the armor through the crowd without her helmet. Like, Bo has her helmet off. And they're all like, oh my goodness. How? <laughs> This is so lame. I can't even tell you, man. This is so bad. And after all, after all this and all these episodes, now the helmets don't matter. This so this show is the dumbest show ever. It's so terribly written. And then Bo is going to unite the Mandos around the galaxy. And this is now the Bo Katan show. This is the Bo Katan show. So who is the Mandalorian anyway? Who is he? Like, didn't get sidelined in his own show again. So it's Grogu was the star, now Bo's the star. And then the armor is like, it is time to retake Mandalore under Bo's, le like, under Bo's leadership, right? And it's like, dude, it's, just go get, just go. It's, ta there's nothing to take. It's just a pile of rubble. Like, like this, they're trying to create this mystique. Like, Mandalore is like this special place. And everyone wants to be there, and we have to go. No one wants to be there. Just go take it then. No one cares. No one cares. And she. And the other thing is, the armor brought up the mythosaur like it was some big deal that Bo had seen the mythosaur. I mean, meanwhile, the end of the last episode, she's like, oh yeah, you saw it, did you? Oh yeah, cool. You'll see lots of things as a Mandalorian. And then she's making a big deal that she saw it in this episode. Doesn't even make any sense. She just switched on a dime. Completely. Like, with zero explanation. Like, after two and a half seasons. <laughs> it's just so garbage. It's just so dumb. Anyway, just go to Mandalore, man. There's no one there. There's a bunch of cavemen. Like, that's it. Like, <laughs> with clubs. We have to go retake it. No one wants it. <laughs> just go. Anyway, this is, this is a terrible show. And then we cut back to the fighter pilot guy. 
and he sees an Imperial shutter floating in space. I have no idea why he's just like traveling all slowly looking at stuff. Like, wouldn't he be like hyperspace traveling between planets? Like he's been to Coruscant and been all over the place. Like, why is he like slowly just going around? No one knows. <laughs> just plot again, plot convenience so they can find this ship. Doesn't make any sense. And, of course, it turns out it's the ship that was transporting Moff Gideon to prison, and everyone's dead, except for Gideon's body is missing. And then he finds a fragment of Beskar, and so then him and whoever he was talking to thinks that the Mandos took him. And then you're like, hey, maybe Bo-Katan is the bad guy in the end here. And, And Din has to fight her. And... Honestly, that would be kind of interesting. It was, it won't it will not redeem this stupidity of the show that makes no sense because that's it's too late for that now. We're way too far and this is a really really nonsensical show, but that would at least make for a cool episode. Um who knows, but um kind of an interesting ending, but again, it's just the whole thing is so nonsensical all throughout the episode. Nothing makes sense. Then the New Republic ships are still sitting at that base doing nothing, but apparently they're too busy to help anybody. And apparently the armor just is, is, I don't know if she's bipolar or has multiple personality disorder, but became a completely different person out of nowhere. And you don't even know who she is now and has no, what is her motivations? And Grogu wasn't even in this episode pretty much. He's just there. I, I just don't get it. This show sucks. It just from a from a story standpoint, when you really stop and think about what's going on, none of it, none of it, makes any sense. And pirates coming back to, like, literally think <laughs> think about this. So the swamp thing pirate guy literally just lost his entire fleet. He had like I don't know eight fighter fighter pilots, and then he lost and ships, and then he lost his all his guys. And then he lost his main cruiser, like this big ship with all these guns and stuff on it, because four of his stupid pirates got shot for wanting a beer in a school. He So he lost it all over that. I mean, so he was just an idiot too? So like, what's the threat? Everyone's an idiot. Everyone's dumb. The New Republic's stupid. The Armor's stupid. Din is stupid throughout this season. He's completely nonsensical. Everyone is stupid. Except for Bo-Katan. And I, I guess that's the theme. They want us to think that Bo-Katan is this genius. And she, she's just not dumb. She's not a genius. She's just not dumb. That's 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 the standard now of genius. is just not being dumb. Oh, man. Anyways, guys. Uh, <laughs> thanks for listening. Have a good day.